Okay, in the last video, we solve for some forces in a normal plane, right? And in this video, we're actually going to solve for the force right here, okay, that Sisyphus is using to push this boulder upwards, okay? So, what's the plan, Nibir? Let me tell you what's the plan. We're gonna find the forces that are balancing each other and actually find the force. It's that simple, okay? That simple. So. This force diagram is not complete, okay? And if we wanted to resolute, okay? If we wanted to resolve this force vector right here and this normal vector, normal force vector also has some, some components, it will just become a lot of hassle, right? A very, very hassling stuff. You, you just have to put in a lot of effort to do that. And instead, we're going to do a really neat thing that is to convert this force of gravity into its horizontal and vertical parts. Okay? Cool. So how are we going to do that? Okay. You have to imagine for a second. Okay. What's what 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 do you what do you have to imagine? Okay, let me tell you. Imagine there's a parallel line right here, okay, to this 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 hill. Okay. Parallel to this hill. Okay? Cool. And from this point. And to this line, you have perpendicular to this line, you have another, you know, line right here. And this forms a triangle, okay? This is perpendicular right here, okay? And if you extend this, okay, cool. So, this line, this line, and this line are parallel. And that means this angle equals 60 degrees because of geometry, how geometry works. And because this angle is a 90 degrees, this particular angle, okay, this particular angle is 90 degrees minus 60 degrees. And that is just 30 degrees, right? And because it's a perpendicular, right? It's a 90 degrees, this angle, this particular angle on the other side of this line, it's 60 degrees because 90 minus 30, that's 60. And so you get something here, okay, this angle, the angle between this line, this line right here, and this line right here, it's 60 degrees, which is the same as the angle of the, our inclined plane. That's really nice, okay? And that is perpendicular to this whole surface. That means it's perpendicular to this hill as well, okay? And that means this, 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 if you, if you had a force on this axis, on this angle, that would balance the normal force. And on this axis, it would balance our force, our Sisyphus force, right? That's the plan. Okay. It's, it's a lot of mass right here. Let me draw that again. Okay. Let me draw that again. Okay. Just a second. Okay. So right here, we have a force. Okay. We have a force right here and this angle is 60 degrees as well, okay? And we have another force right here, right here, okay? And this is what? This has an angle and this is the horizontal component of force of gravity. Why not vertical? Because, you know, it depends on the angle. It's, it's in the reference with the angle, right? So this here, this is Fg. Okay, no, no, let me draw that with a different color because I've written already, you know, this frictional stuff, you know. I've say I'm saving the green color for the friction in the next videos. Okay. So yeah, these are the F G sub X and that will equal to F G cos theta because it is with with it's 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 the adjacent base of the angle, right? And we have right here the Fg sine theta, sine theta, okay, sine theta. And this diagram may be a bit uh, confusing, maybe a bit uh, not, you know, like very accurate to the trigonometric definitions and stuff, but you get the idea, right? This is the, you know, vertical component, okay? And this is the horizontal component. So we have found this, and with the help of this new force diagram, we can just see that this force is being balanced with this. And I think I have to draw this. Okay, let me erase all that because I want to draw it 
equal. Okay, equal. Okay. Okay, mind mind you that uh, the Sisyphus is pushing the bulwer at a constant velocity. Okay, that's important for us to realize. Okay, at a constant velocity. What does that mean? It means that it has an acceleration of zero. Okay, remember first law of motion that there can be no change in the state of motion if there is no unbalanced force, right? Okay, make sense? Okay, no un unbalanced force, no extra thing. That means acceleration is zero. That means velocity is constant in this case, okay? Velocity is constant, okay? So let us solve for the force, okay? Now let us take some numbers right here. Let's take the mass of this boulder of this nice round boulder to be a hundred kgs. Okay, I'm I'm taking really uh, nice numbers right here. And let's take G, that is the acceleration due to gravitational force to be 10 meter per second square, just to make things easy for us, you know, because we like things easy, but nothing, nothing comes easy, to be honest. Anyway, so let us solve for this. Okay, we know that this angle equals 60. So let me write that down here. Let us solve for the Sisyphean force. Okay, cool. We can just see by the force diagram that F1 equals the magnitude of F1 equals F the magnitude of Fg sine theta. Okay. And now we'll do that with the second law of motion. Okay. So acceleration equals the net force times, sorry, not times, over the mass. Okay. And we're taking this, this as the direction of motion, okay? The Sisyphean motion, okay? The, this, 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 at the angle of this, right? Make sense? So that's the direction we are taking, not this direction, not taking normal and Fg cos theta, okay? We're talking about this only, okay? So we have our acceleration of zero because it is moving in a constant velocity, okay? Zero meter per second, okay, zero meter per second square and what are the net force okay we have the force of sisyphus f1 that is moving the boulder in its course that is positive okay this one is positive and this one is negative right here okay positive f1 and we have a negative fg sine theta force of gravity sine theta why because it's against the motion okay fg sine theta right here and we have a mass of a uh, of a hundred hundred kg, okay, not g kg, okay, cool. And if we multiply this here, it will just become zero. So uh, I don't, I want, I want to write that stuff down, okay. And we'll just skip to the step where we bring f g sine theta the right hand side. So let me write that here again, okay. F g sine theta here equals f1 and mind you this is only the magnitude okay make sure of that only the magnitude of this thing equals to fg sine theta cool very nice okay and let us put in the numbers okay let us put in fg and fg equals fg equals mass sorry fg equals mass times g okay mass times g and we have a sine sine of 60 degrees of 60 degrees and that will equal to f1 okay let me write that here f1 and what is mg here what is mg we have a mass of 100 kg okay 100 kg and we're multiplying that with 10 meter per second square 10 meter per second square with sine 60 degrees which is root 3 by 2 right okay and that will equal to f1 cool so let me bring up some space here we're just gonna multiply this and that will result in 1000 1000 newtons okay no no let me write that with a yellow color instead okay 1000 newtons because kg mg uh, sorry kg meter per second square that is the dimensions that is the you know fundamental units of the newton 
and we'll multiply that with root 3 by 2 and that will equal f1 cool again we're dividing by 2 so it will 500 500 newtons times root 3 okay root 3 and this is where I bring up my calculator but I won't bring it up on the screen this time because I don't have it open I'm really sorry uh, 500 times root 3 I'm doing this on my calculator you can also try and check you know verify what I'm saying and turns out that f1 equals approximately to 866 newtons so yeah this is the thing okay so Sisyphus is using Sisyphus is using 866 newtons you know pushing with 600 866 newtons to move this boulder upwards with a constant velocity and mind you this is a frictionless hill so we are not taking an account of the friction right here okay we'll do that in the next videos I suppose uh, we're not taking into account of that because if if we had friction it would just oppose the motion you know to this side it it would add up with fg sine theta right here you know friction right here and that would make Sisyphus use more force okay more force than 866 to do that okay so we'll do that in the next video so what did we do we use the you know resolution method of vectors to find the the uh, forces that are balancing each other so the force that is Sisyphus is using is balancing is being balanced by the fg sine theta and we use the second law of motion the formula to solve for that and we did just that